online. <laughs>
Welcome, Alfred. See ya. Jacob, welcome. It's the time of Thanksgiving. We give you praise. We give you praise. Oh, ha. Huh. Welcome, welcome, folks. Welcome, welcome to the program today. Welcome to the program. Let me begin by saying, let me begin by saying, happy, happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to all of you, to all of you, to all of you. Uh, I am elate, elated. I am excited today because I have a servant of God with me. I'm not alone. We are never alone. He promised always to be with us. But when you find a friend in Jesus, who's not Jesus, but a friend of Jesus also, that's exciting. Ladies and gentlemen, with me in the studio, you see that handsome young man? That's right. <laughs> He's a servant of God. His name is uh, I call him I call him pastor, reverend, minister, but most of all, he likes to be called a servant of God. His yes. name is Alexander Red. Welcome, Alex. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me on your program today. Thanksgiving. Amen. And we are so delighted to just give thanks to the Lord and also to share with our viewers. And we are so happy. We are delighted because, in fact, every day is Thanksgiving to unto the Lord. Oh. But this day is put aside in a secular world or in history so that we can meet as family members physically, whether far or near, so that we can celebrate and have a sense of oneness in the same spirit. No, no, no. We met by way of this venue through online. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, the first time I saw anything about you was when you went to actually support the Christian and Educational Broadcast Network that I'm trying to establish in Liberia. And I thought you were in Liberia. So why don't you tell us, I really <laughs> did, why don't you tell us where you are, the name of your ministry, and what you do? Well, I am a Liberian, and I was a former journalist. I was a broadcast journalist in Liberia. I worked with DC 101. I got trained by E. Blamo Robinson, the late Blamo Robinson of ERBC. And I just uh, got into broadcast journalism um, following the admiration of Charles Bouillon, the, the late Charles Bouillon, who was a t TV personality. And I followed journalism. I learned along the way. I was not the most articulate journalist uh, on the airwaves. I had other people that I admire so well. And I was opportune to come to the United States for training with now the Minister of uh, Information, Lecce, who ran it with the training together here in the U.S., along with Titi Kane, who is the managing uh, director for the Spawn TV now, as well as um, who else? It's me, Volcano Shelter, Titi Kane, and someone else. I don't well, know. Time, my time my mind is that. blinking time right now. That. Yes. So um, it's, it's, so that's that's my background as a journalist. And I went through troubling times with uh, the Taylor administration uh, following an investigation into the Simon Duki murder. He was a politician who was uh, murdered apparently by security forces of Taylor. And I wanted to get a scoop. And so... It was in late December of uh, 1997, and and then on my way back, I was kidnapped and tortured for three days where our food almost died. But uh, human rights activists like uh, TN1 Ganglu, uh, Samuel Kofi Wools, they all came to my rescue, and I was in fact charged by the government. I was charged with treason. They said I was committing treason against the government by inciting the public because there were demonstrations at uh, the police station uh, from free, let's say by free, few friends. And so they charged me treason. They couldn't substantiate that treason charges. And I was let go and I was harassed because they did not want me to um, broadcast anything that I have learned from the murder scene in the Banga area. And so because I was harassed and threat on my life, death threats, I left the country and I came to the United States. And since then, I've been here, did my education here, and then God called me into ministry. Wait, wait a minute here. After wait a first... minute here. Wait a minute here. <laughs> so, so they wanted the truth suppressed. Exactly. And, and exactly. In an That's attempt what happened. To have the truth suppressed, you were beaten, you were tortured for three days. Uh, human rights individuals had to come to your rescue, all because yes. you knew the truth that would have been an impediment to this to that government at the time yes yes wow, to that wow, erstwhile wow, wow. government 
Yeah, and so I came to the States and I've been here since then and then going through life challenges, the Lord uh, intervened in my life and and I was able to go to seminary, learn, and, and here I am sharing the word of God. I enjoy sharing the word of God. Why? Because the word of God is alive Amen. Amen. and it's sharper Amen. than two double-edged sword and it, it cuts every part of your being. And that's why I share the word of God because God has allowed his word to seep deep down into my heart. And I am so elated every time to share the word of God. And developing this ministry, the idea came about in 2016. And the Lord gave me the vision after praying several times. And I wanted to get into ministry. And therefore, the idea evolved over time and over prayer. I was able to form the online or the electronic um, broadcast. But I'm a member of the Community Bible Church uh, based in California. And they helped me through seminary. I attended the seminary there, the, the college, on, the Bible hold college on, hold there. On, hold on, hold on. I am glad you're bringing seminary yes. up. Because, <laughs> yes. because we have a whole bunch of folks without mm -hmm. proper training. Now, I know God can call you uh, without mm -hmm. having to go to seminary, but I see a lot of folks get up, yes. say they call, their swords are not sharpened, their tools are not sharpened, they mm -hmm. are not uh, 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 versed in the Word of God. Yeah. They do not understand the Bible from a contextual standpoint, a historical standpoint. They do not understand the Bible in its etymology in church history and all mm -hmm. the nuances. And yet they put themselves in a position to pastor and lead the people of God. I'm glad to hear you went to seminary. Yes, yes. And I'm glad, too, that I went there because my eyes began to open more to understand the character of God and proper training is necessary. Now, there are some people who dismiss the whole idea mm -hmm. and they put forward a proposition that, well, God can speak to me and I can hear him. But then when it comes to looking at the scriptures and actually exegete the scriptures, they have problems. They have problems with that. You got to help people. You're talking about breaking <laughs> <laughs> scripture in his nuances talking about doing exegesis okay all right but yes come on okay but but folks the, re the, re yes. the reason why i wanted you to talk about that is because mm. god calls us out of our experiences and it yes. is in our experiences and i heard you speak about that a little bit today it is through our experiences that god gets to use us and use what we've come through to bring his people through so uh, i'm glad you shared that that stuff about being in prison, being 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 tortured, because God brought you out. Yes. Okay, go on. Yes, God is our deliverer, and he, and he, and he was always with me. But you see, the good thing is that when I look back in the, at the book in the book of Romans. Paul said, while we were still sinners, while Christ we were, died yeah. for us. Yes, yes, sir. We, <laughs> yes. So all that time when we were living in sin, Christ had already done the work. Yes. But he was just waiting for us to come on. And when life got me in many challenging ways, then my back against the wall, then Christ said, son, I've been waiting for you a long time. Oh, then, then you, then you call upon you. him. <laughs> then <laughs> yes. you call upon him. You know, and then I call upon him. That's what him. I like about Psalm 91. At, a verse 15, yes. at about verse 15, he says, he shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. With long life will I satisfy him and show him. <laughs> my salvation it is when sometimes when you're in trouble that's when you you you, you pay attention to god so now exactly what, <laughs> what's the name of your of, the, of your online ministry gracious hope bible fellowship we have a facebook page a group page and then we have the video page uh you can sign up there you can also uh get to our uh, channel our youtube channel you can click subscribe and you will watch all our previous videos as well as live programs and on the facebook group page we have theological articles we have devotional daily devotionals shared by my other colleague um uh, Revin Swadede, as well as uh, Sean Emmanuel uh, Collie Senior, they all share daily devotionals, but they are all designed to inspire and strengthen your faith in Christ. Because at the end of the day, it's all about Amen. Jesus Christ. Amen. He should be exalted Amen. in Amen. every Amen. way. It's all yes. about 
Jesus. It's all about Jesus. Yes. Look, I'm so happy to have you on the program. I know it's Thanksgiving. I know I got another 60 minutes of your time. I got my good buddy Edwin in the background. So right now, what I want you to do is do as the Lord leads. This, just remember, it's Thanksgiving, <laughs> folks. Happy Thanksgiving. I got the man, the servant of God with me tonight. <laughs> Alex, re, re, Alex, come on. What are you going to say to us on Thanksgiving? What are you going to say? Sure, sure. I have to share here. I know it's Thanksgiving. We all, some of you preparing right now at the dinner table or you're in the kitchen or whatever, or wherever you find yourself right now, whether with your family or by yourself, remember Jesus Christ is our Emmanuel. Amen. He is with wow. us everywhere we are. His spirit is with us. And we must acknowledge that. We must recognize and we must thank him. So we know that Christ taught us how to pray to God and the way we can express that is through prayer. But I want to also highlight a man who Paul, his name is Paul, Apostle Paul. He's a man who God has worked in his life all along when he was converted on the road to Damascus. He was a vicious Jew. I mean, vicious in a way where he persecuted the way the Christians at the time. He didn't want to hear the name Jesus mm. Christ. And so anybody who preached Jesus Christ, you were A on his mm. list. And so you, you, were, came on, a you time, were on his hit list. Yeah, hit <laughs> okay. list. Yes. Wow. Yes. Hit list. And so he got converted. He saw the light, the light of life. And that is through Jesus Christ, according to John. Jesus Christ is the light of mm. life. And Christ said, why are you persecuting me? And I know you came to Christ in various ways. You have your own story to tell. But God has a way of getting to us. You know why? Because he knows you better than yourself. Mm. He knows when to get you. So you can run, 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 but you can hide. Wow. And in my case, I know from my own testimony, it came a time where God said, I'm ready for you, son. And I give in. So surrender is the key. And as we celebrate Thanksgiving today, let us always remember, we have to surrender to God. And so surrendering is every day in our Thanksgiving, whether it is prayer, whether it is uh, expressing it verbally to tell others about our testimony, let us always remember that we must totally surrender because that's how the Holy Spirit speaks to us. And, and surrendering to God is allowing God to understand how humble we are. So let me ask you a question. This Thanksgiving mm -hmm. today, is it the only day in your life that you gave thanks to God? And if it is so, then that is ungrateful, my friend, because you know why? God wants us to thank him every day. And this is what I do when I wake up in the morning. The first thing I touch my, my leg to make sure that everything is functioning, my, 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 my fingers. And when I get a feeling, I say, thank you, Lord. And then after my prayer, I open the Bible for my devotion. You know why I do that? Because the breath of life that we have is not ours. It can be taken away anytime. And so if we breathe each and every day, we should be thankful to God. That is a spiritual reality. And that is the reality that Jesus Christ expressed throughout his entire life and his ministry. He prayed a lot. And he taught the disciples, including us who are followers of Jesus Christ, the model prayer. We have to hallow his name, honor him, and recognize he's our father. But remember, you are not the only child. God has many children all around the world, and that's why we acknowledge him in everything. Now, I would like to share the passage here with you on the Apostle Paul that we were just talking about previously. He went through a whole lot. Paul was beaten, and he was uh, taken into custody, and, and he, he persevered all through. And besides Christ, he is an example of what a true disciple is. If you want to follow Jesus Christ, Christ said, give your life up and, you know, you lose your life and then get your life back. So look at the uh, book of uh, Philippians chapter four, and we'll look at Paul here in verse 11. He says, not that I was ever in need, for I have learned how to get along happily, whether I have much or little. I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I have learned a secret of contentment in every situation, whether it be a full stomach or hunger, plenty or want. For I can do everything God asks me to do with the help of Christ, who gives me the strength and power. Hallelujah to that. You see, Paul 
in spite <laughs> of his adversity you're, you're in life. You're preaching, my brother. You're preaching. Go ahead. <laughs> he was, yes, he was very thankful to God. He said, I have been happy at times. I have much. And at times, I don't have any. But still, I am content. That is the key word. Yes, if we want to express our attitude of gratitude to God, is to be content. Contentment with godliness is what God is looking for in each and every one of us. So this beautiful day of Thanksgiving, we must adhere to what Paul is saying here. He says he has learned the secret of contentment. He said he has learned in every situation. And how did he do that? He realizes that God gives and God takes mm. away. So should we complain now? No, we shouldn't complain. Should we see others maybe advancing in certain things that we wish we had been the same or, or, or receiving that same kind of a gift or whatever that person has? No, we should not be jealous. We should not be uh, envious, but we should be content. Mm. You know why? Because if we are content, it means we are trusting God and God wants us to trust him. And that's where faith comes in. Thanksgiving is all about having our faith grounded in Jesus Christ and asking him every day to give us the wisdom and the knowledge to live in this world. This world right now is full of a lot of chaos, the health crisis or the pandemic the political tension in the United States, even in our home country, Liberia right now, the senatorial race is coming up. We see a lot of ritualistic killing going on. We see a lot of other things that are so, uh, 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 what would I say, mundane and against God's will. And these are people who profess to be followers of Jesus Christ. You bet you ask any of, the, any of those who are running a political race, they all profess to have a church and to love Jesus Christ. But then do we match the outside, the manifestation of our actions in line with godly principles? We see sometimes the difference. And so I want to encourage you today, my friend, on this Thanksgiving to trust God, to thank him for his benevolence, to praise him for guarding you in everything. And Paul was content because he knew the secret. And that secret was to what? to receive his strength through Jesus Christ. And that's why we are, as followers of Jesus Christ, we are to thank God because Christ can strengthen us in every situation. Therefore, we are to give thanks and we must have the attitude of gratitude toward God and toward our fellow brothers and sisters. So that's what I have to share with you here today. And I hope it makes sense to you. And for you who are listening or watching right now, if you haven't received Jesus Christ in your life, Amen. this is what you do. If you confess with your, your mouth and believe in your heart that Christ is uh, your Savior and your Lord, then you are saved. Simple as that. But you must believe in every faculty of your being that God loves you. He is a creator. He is sovereign. He rules your life. And once you surrender, then the spirit of God will begin to work in you. So accept the invitation today. If you truly want to make changes and whatever difficulty you are going through, I don't know what you're going through, but I pray to the Lord Jesus Christ, that he will come in your life today and strengthen you in every way. And so let us celebrate this day. And it should not just be a day, but it should be a time of reflection, a time that God has done a lot of things in your life. And now, even with your difficult situation, remember, it's a learning process because there's no, if there's no pain, no gain, as they say, right? So... It is the way that we learn. It is a process. But let us always focus on the author and finisher of our faith, Jesus Christ. Because God brings, he works, he, he causes all things to work together for the good, the bad, the ugly, and the bitter. He brings them together. And all those pieces make you up, wow. make up your character in Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Oh, <laughs> right. servant of God, servant of God, Alexander Rett. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I am very grateful for you sharing the word of God with us, in giving people an invitation to make Jesus Lord, sharing your own testimony, your own past, and how you've been called to walk in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. It is my prayer that our friendship and the people that have heard you today will continue to grow and that God will expound your territory 
that wherever your feet trot, wherever your voice is heard, that the people of God will receive him in their hearts and their lives will be transformed. Thank you Amen. so much for being here. Happy Thanksgiving. God bless you. Thank you and amen to that. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Any last word you want to say? Well, the last thing that I can say is that, um, you know, I pray not just for ourselves and our families, but I pray for our country, Liberia. Mm. As we know in Romans chapter 13, that God ordains every government. Mm. And because of his ordination, there's a mandate for each and every leader. And that is to uh, work with integrity. I pray that God will instill integrity as well as with the wisdom and the knowledge for them to lead our people faithfully. I know we are all imperfect, but our country has come a long way. We have been through coups, assassinations, as well as a civil war, Ebola, and we have been ravaged by the lot. And this is a learning process that a nation without God is going nowhere. Uh, that nation will wobble in, in, in progress. And that's where we are. We are wobbly because we turn away from God. And as a former journalist who work in that country, I have seen a lot. And I have known a lot. And I have seen uh, people who come on the stage as mansion men and leader and look where they are today. Wow. We ought to learn that God is the only authority He's sovereign and his authority rules over everybody, every creature, because he is a creator and we are the inhabitants and we are to bow to him. And who has all of the authority? Jesus Christ claimed that, that all authority in heaven and earth has been given to him. Matthew chapter uh, 28, verse 19. He said that, so therefore go to all nations and preach what? The gospel. And that is why at Gracious Hope Bible Fellowship, we emphasize the exaltation of Jesus Christ because he saves and he gives life to the uh, to the lifeless. And so I just want to express that, that we are in prayers uh, with all of those in our home country, Liberia, including those who are going through pain and suffering. Uh, we understand that the coronavirus is, 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 is spiking again, but I pray, Lord, that even whether it's the political environment or whether it is an ecclesiastical establishment, that is the entire church, I pray for every member, every leader to be strengthened by the Lord. And may we all focus on the Lord so that our nation can turn back to God. Because Liberia, fundamentally, we were established on Christian principles and values, and those values and principles who need to be uh, brought back into our society. The culture is decaying right now, and we have to be the salt and light of our culture as believers in Christ. Politicians do not have the future for our country. The future of Liberia is in the hands of the believers in Jesus Christ. Why? Look at Ephesians chapter 1. We have been endowed with all the riches of God's grace. We have the key to the kingdom of God. So when God is sovereign and he ordains every government, and if you're a child of God, you have the power, you have the spirit. And the root of our problem in our country, it is spiritual. Amen. Even in our own lives, spiritual. And therefore we must turn back to God and so that our nation can be vibrant and viable once again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You've been listening to Alexander Rett from California and the ministry is? Gracious Hope Bible Fellowship, and it's from Madison, Wisconsin. All right, all right, here we go. Thank you so much, Alexander. I will be talking to you later. Thanks. Thank God you. God bless. God. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I am, I am back. I am back. I am back uh, with uh, two good friends. Two good friends. And you know the passage that that Alexander uh, read just expounded on. Uh, Paul is talking about he's, he's had rough times, he's had bad times, he's had plenty, he's had none. But in all the situations he gave thanks, whether he was in want or whether he was living in the lap of luxury, he gave God thanks. He said he learned to be content in all things, content in all things. I have two very good friends with me. I have, ladies and gentlemen, one, I have, look look, look at him right here. I, I, want, you, I want you to look at it. The, I call him the bearded one. You know, <laughs> the bearded one, and, and, and we're looking right now, we're looking right now at Edwin Marcus Jones. Edwin, how you doing? I'm okay, Reverend. 
Oh, man, I'm glad you could make it in the program. Look, it's all Thanksgiving. It's all Thanksgiving. I, I, I wanted you on because basically uh, this, is the, this is the day to have an attitude of gratitude. But uh, as, as uh, Red said, every day is a day to be thankful. What are you thankful for on this Thanksgiving day? That's what I want to know. What are you thankful for? Well, I'm thankful for life. Okay. You know, I'm thankful for... For family, you know, thankful for friends, you know, I'm thankful that I met you, you know, I mean. Wait, 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 hold on, on, I met you. I, I jumped the gun, but a lot of people are, are looking and they say, who is Edwin Marcus Jones? Now, they want to know who you are. Tell us a little bit about you. Come on, come on, go ahead. Yeah, Bendu, I know, you want to know, I got that. Junior, you want to know too, right? Go ahead. Tell I, us about I you. <laughs> I'm just a simple man, man. I'm just a simple man, you know. Uh, I, I, this is my first time, like, on a Zoom type thing. So I'm kind of, like, you know, feeling it out because publicly I don't like to be seen too much. Well, you've been seen plenty <laughs> and you've been heard tonight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I tell you, you and Reverend Red got me so scared tonight or this evening because you know almost like you got caught me and put me like in some like you know you know how like when a high man catch you like the yeah, way yeah, yeah. you got talking about god i'm like i'm like wondering saying man what have i done wrong because all my life i've been i've been waiting for like this bright light to come out of the sky and just well, well back a little <laughs> bit from the camera let's see that full face can we just looking at you there you go i yeah. like that better yeah yeah, uh -huh. so, yeah so i've been waiting for this bright light to come out so i can surrender but i don't see that bright light you know i kind of want i don't was it saul on his way to damascus or something yeah that yeah, was Saul. but the way the way god will come to saul isn't the way he's gonna come to edwin he comes to I all know. of us in his own way. So stop waiting for the light because you're already in the light. I don't know. You know, I wish I wish you would tell me how he coming because I've been waiting, man. I've been waiting. He, he, he's right here with you right now as I speak. He's right <laughs> here. But because you're telling us what you're grateful for. So you're grateful for life. You're grateful for family, friends. I'm grateful for every human being in the world. You know, I just grateful just that at least, you know, I breathe, you know, true, you know, like, I don't know, you talk about Paul and you talk about, you know, living a life of content or living a life of even hard times, true at all, mm. you know, if, if we believe that we we're put here by, by a force greater than us and that force is God and, you know, Jesus Christ, then I just, I just remain grateful, you know, I just thank God. Well, I, you know, you, you, you know, you and I were having a conversation about three days ago, and right. I, I was telling you how much I I believed in like predestination or something, and and you and I had we reached an agreement on what predestination was, and I've been thinking about that a lot, you know, uh -huh. and yeah, and stuff, and I think you told me about. Uh, you know, I asked you, I said, well, it seems like everything in your life is written by God. And you told me, well, no, not necessarily. God can change your life at any time, any moment. And you told me the story of, I think, Hezekiah. Correct. You got a good memory. <laughs> yeah. You told me the story of Hezekiah. And this this is new, though. But, I, I you know, I, I, like I said, I'm grateful I met you. And hopefully, maybe you will help me find that light. <laughs> Well, as long as we're friends, you're going to keep hearing about the Word of God. I want to thank you so much, Edwin, for coming on the program today and just sharing what you're grateful for. You're grateful for life. You're grateful for health. You're grateful for your family. So many times mm -hmm. we take these things for granted. We take it for granted that we're able to get up every day and walk. We're able to talk. We're able to smell. We're able to taste. It's amazing how many hundreds of thousands of people today, today in America, are in the hospital. Today cannot smell, today cannot taste, today cannot see. But you have all of your senses 
working in you. It's all because of Christ who lives in you. We live and move and have our being because of the God that lives in us. If God had no purpose for you, my brother, you would no longer be on the face of this earth. But God got some good things for you, and we ought to thank him for it. God bless you. God bless you. I am so grateful for having met you through these programs. I want to thank you, and I want to thank God for you. Have a great day, brother. Any last you word you want to say? Happy Thanksgiving to you and Mrs. Martin, and continue to preach the word because you're inspiring people out there and you're doing God's work. I appreciate you right back, my brother. The love of God to you and your family as well. Thank you, sir. I'll be right. talking to you soon. All you right. Bet. You bet. You bet. Okay. You okay. bet. Wow, 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 wow. My goodness, my goodness, my goodness. Ah. Uh, I am looking at a good friend. I'm looking at a good friend. I got I got it. And that is not Edwin Marcus Jones. That is not Edwin Marcus Jones. Let, let me let me correct that. That's my namesake. <laughs> let me let me type this in quick. Uh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Let me do this. That's that's who that's who he is. There he is. And that's not his picture. Charles Adam McGee. Yes, sir. That's Charles Levi Martin St. Charles Adam McGee. How you doing, my brother? God is good, my brother. God is good. And thank you very much uh, for inviting me on this uh, cast today. Hey, man, listen, listen. listen I, I, I've known you forever. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give I'm going to give the people out there a chance to know who you are. So why don't you take a moment, my brother, and just tell us, tell us about you. Well, um, firstly, I'm grateful to God for our friendship that has spanned over five decades, going from our Boy Scout days, our school days, and the relationship continues to grow from strength to strength. So I thank God for the brotherly ties. I'm also grateful to God uh, for surviving the Liberian Civil War and coming to the United States with just two dollars. Wait, 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 wait. You came to the United States with two dollars? With two dollars in my pocket and I got off the plane at JFK, I had two dollars in my pocket. What year was that? 1991, November. 1991, you came to America with two dollars in your pocket. With two you know, you know, it cannot, it cannot, two dollars cannot buy a 24 ounce Wawa coffee. Nothing. You would need another two cents. And God added that two cents to it. Hey, come on, come on. So talk, talk to me. Talk to me. You, you know, there are a lot of people today who are listening, Charles Adam McGee. Some are even listening from Liberia, looking one day to come to the United States. Some people had dreams of coming here. They got here and did nothing with it. We were in school together in St. Patrick's. I know we studied very hard. We studied assiduously together. In fact, I still keep a 30 days to a more powerful vocabulary on my desk. He's laughing because he knows what I'm talking about. Uh, but, but tell me about your experience, and what do you do now, or what have you been doing in this country that you're grateful for? Please share. Well, when I arrived here, I started from the rock bottom, doing odd jobs, went to school, got a little more education. Of course, graduated from St. Patrick's High School and then Collington University, uh, and then I added a couple more degrees. And since I've been here, I've uh, served as a school administrator, as a nursing home administrator, and uh, I retired last year, and uh, I'm now the lead community account manager with the United Way. It's a seasonal job I do. I've been doing this for the last seven or eight years. Wow. God has been really good. Uh, 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 thank God for children, grandchildren, and just for the good health to be able to serve humanity. And I want to use this opportunity to the viewing audience to say God is real. Hmm. All you have to do is to match your prayers with works. You cannot just lay down and pray. When you pray, you you got to uh, uh, manifest it in having a goal, having a dream. That is a wonderful land we live in. And I would be remiss not to say I'm also grateful to God for the election of Joe Biden. Come on, come on. Share. This country was going south. Hmm. Uh, this is not why we, we came to this country. We came to this country because we wanted freedom, liberty, and to give back to the community. But things were going in a direction that uh, was unlike what America stands for. And we're happy to have a man of God uh, hmm. that is going to lead this country back 
into the path of righteousness. Truly, I share, I share that sentiment along with you because my mom used to say uh, uh, America would go to hell in a handbasket. And, and it really was. It was, it, was going, it was going to a place of ill repute. Uh, it become a place of criminality, uh, uh, lawlessness, uh, 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 racial injustice, uh, uh, thievery. All the stuff we were seeing happening in this place that we always looked up to as the, as the nation that we wanted our own country to be. And when it began to look no better than our own country and the leadership resembled ours, uh, I had a real problem with that. So I join you and the millions of others who are saying we're grateful and we're thankful this Thanksgiving that we have Joe Biden as the president-elect, president to be uh, on January 20th of this, of the next year. Charles Adam McGee. Thank you, sir. Thank you for having me. And uh, again, you're not going that quick. You're not going that quick. You're not going that quick. I, I'm, I'm grateful to you. I'm grateful to you because you called me one day and said, listen, I remember your mother and all of this. And I, 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 I want to begin a scholarship in her name. You did that. Yes, sir. You did that. You did that. I, I didn't call you. I didn't ask you. You felt led to do that. You felt driven to do that. You retired and still you wanted to do that. I am grateful. I want to take this moment of Thanksgiving to thank you for the generosity, the altruism uh, that you that you that you uh, give out. And, 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 and we want to assure you that one Liberian girl will be in B.W. Harris School next semester. Amen. One of the genies of poor Fleming scholarship initiated Amen. by my good friend Charles Adam McGee. We'll Charles Adam McGee. We'll and, and, and remember the word remember the word ridicule? Hey, that's way back. That's way back. Uh, uh, that's how's, your, how's your family? How's your family? I, I understand. I, I understand you're a grandfather now. Yes, indeed. I, have, I, I uh, saw you playing with grandchildren. I ain't had no thanks, thankfulness for that. Come on, talk to me. How about a wife? <laughs> it is amazing how we can bond ourselves, man. When I see the children, the grandchildren, and mm. see all of those traits and, you know, ambition, uh, it is amazing. God is good, Charlie. God is good. Yes, God he is. is. Good. Yes, he is. Well, well uh, let me not uh, hold you up because I have uh, another engagement. Uh, like I said, I, let's, I, let's that talk about it. That engagement sound like a turkey, but that's okay. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God for the turkey, man. You, I, I, see, I see you did not pardon that turkey, but you're going to say grace for it. I'll pray for it. Amen, amen. Charles Adam McGee, thank you so much for being on the program. I do appreciate you on this Thanksgiving day. God bless you, my brother. Right back at you, man. All right. Love you, brother. Love you. Love you, love you right back. Hello, my brother. Happy Thanksgiving Day. Hello? That's an error call. Folks, I want to I wanna just uh, take a moment to uh, just thank all of you who are on the program today. What I want to do, what I want to do, I was able to get Charles Addy McGee on, a high school friend from St. Patrick's, uh, to just, you know, express what he's thankful for. The Bible says in everything we are to give God thanks. We are to give God the glory. In everything we are to give God thanks. I got another few minutes on, but I, I, I want to, I want to uh, 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 share what the, the Word of God says. It says, with everything through prayer and thanksgiving, through prayer and supplication, make your request known unto God. The Bible says that we ought to be thankful and bless His name. For the Lord is good, and his mercy endure it forever. When you think about the thousands of people who are no longer with us, when you think about the many hundreds of thousands unemployed, when you think of the many who are sick today, thousands, close to 100,000 in the hospitals in America due to COVID, when you think of the many individuals with no food, some, some close to 20 million uh, Americans are now almost homeless or hungry. And yet and still, this great God has, has, has provided for you. He's put food on your table and clothes on your back and put a rooftop over your head. He provides you water when 
Millions of people every day don't have safe drinking water. God has been a God of provision. He's been Jehovah Jireh to you. He has provided. So on this Thanksgiving day, when you can walk to your refrigerator, when you can put your hands of love around your wife and your children, when you have money in the bank, and you have a God to glorify, you ought to give him thanks. You ought to give him praise. You ought to lift up his name. You ought to thank him and bless his name. For the Lord is good and his mercy endureth forever. Paul says, I've been rich and I've been poor. I've had plenty and I've been in want. But in all of this, I've been content. I've learned to be content. I've learned to be satisfied. And that is what God is asking us to do. To be content. Because if we are grateful with the little things that we have, and we can give God the praise in the midst of the little that we have, God will give us more for little is much. If, if God is in it, little is much. If God is in it, too many people are not grateful because they don't have the big house yet. They don't have the big car. They don't have the money. They don't have this. And so they, 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 they do not have an attitude of gratitude. They're looking at somebody else. Looking at somebody else. But there was a song we sang in Liberia. Oh, Lord, I just thank you, thank you, thank you. Lord, I just thank you, thank you, thank you. Lord, I just thank you all the days of my life. You heard Charles Adam McGee. He came to America with no more than $2 in his pocket. And yet he's been administrator both in a, in a nursing home, in a school administration, administrator, and in the school. Retired with wife and children and grandchildren. God will bless you if you show you're content. If you show you're grateful. Your attitude, your, oh, come on now, your altitude, your altitude, how high you go depends on your attitude. Let me say it again. Your altitude depends on your attitude. Have an attitude of gratitude. Be grateful, be grateful, be grateful, be grateful. Be grateful. Be grateful this Thanksgiving that you're still in the land of the living be grateful this Thanksgiving that you still have breath, that you can breathe. Be thankful this Thanksgiving that you have a family. Some of you ought to be thankful that coronavirus did not end your life, that God saw it fit to touch you and heal you and deliver you and bring you home again. Be grateful, be thankful, be thankful, be thankful. The one thing that God does not like one thing I know he does not like that displeases God is a murmurer a murmurer a complainer a complainer a murmurer one who is not satisfied with where he is not satisfied I don't say stay there and don't go any further just just believe God and then and then work and strive and have faith and, and do the things that are right in his sight and he will elevate you when the children of Israel were coming through the passage to the promised land, it was their murmuring that displeased God. What are you complaining about? What are you ungrateful for? What are you ungrateful for? My brothers and sisters, the man was, the man was complaining, complaining that he had no feet, murmuring that he had no feet until he saw a man uh, I got it backwards, though. He was murmuring that he had no shoes. That's right. Murmuring, complaining, I, I got no shoes. Until he saw a man who had no feet. When you look back over your life, hasn't God been there? Hasn't God brought you through the muck and the ma and the horrible pit? Has God not established your feet? I'm grateful today. I'm grateful today. I'm going to give you an opportunity wherever you are to just call in and say, you know what? I'm thankful on this day. I'm thankful. And just tell us what you're thankful for. Just tell us. Amen. I'm, I'm thankful for, for this. I'm thankful for that. I want to give you a number you can dial in and just call. Just tell us your name, where you're calling from. 
on all. Tell us. Tell us. Tell us what you're grateful for. Tell us what you're thankful for. Tell us. Tell us. I'm, I'm thankful for, for air. I'm thankful for life. Here's the number. I, all I need you to do is dial this number. Dial this number. 732-754-9172. Dial this number. And we will just have you tell us what you're grateful for. What you're grateful for. I am grateful for Jesus Christ. I'm thankful that he gave himself as a ransom for my life, that he died on Calvary's tree, that I might have a right to the tree of life. For without his amazing grace, we will not have an opportunity to one day spend eternity with our Lord, Almighty God, and his Son, Jesus Christ, in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Be thankful today. Many of you are seated at the table or have already had the turkey with family. I pray that it's a close family. I pray that it's not a huge crowd. But the turkey, you ought to be thankful for it. I pray that you said grace, amen. You ought to be thankful for the loved ones around you, the people with whom you're fellowshipping. Because you see, life on this earth is temporal. It has a span. It has a expiration date none of us will stay here forever so enjoy your achievements enjoy your plans enjoy your family enjoy your fellowship but in enjoying them give God the thanks in everything we ought to thank God in everything we ought to give God the glory in everything we ought to give God the praise I'm going to give you an opportunity to dial that number and I'm going to listen to a piece of music right now by one of Liberia's best, C.C. Bernard. And, and as she plays, amen. My God, where is it? Let it be done unto me. Hello. According to I love that. Come on! I'm thankful! Happy Thanksgiving Day! Come on! Happy Thanksgiving! Happy Thanksgiving! Home. 
Give him thanks for your life. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. We praise your name, Father. Give him glory. Ah. Praise him today. Thank him for the breath running warm in your veins. <laughs> for the mobility of your limbs. You can move your phalanges. You can move your fingers. Thank him for being in a sound mind. Ah, thank God for his spirit that endured in you. Thank God, thank God, thank God, thank God. The Lord loves gratitude. The Lord loves his praise. The Bible says he inhabits the praise of his saints. Why don't you thank him? Thank him today. Come on. Come on, thank him. Thank him, thank him, thank him. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All ye lambs, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All ye lambs, serve the Lord with gladness. Come on, come on. Be joyful and bless his name. For the Lord is good and his mercy and that mercy endure it forever. You know, folks, every time you, you come to give God thanks, just thank God. Just thank God. Put your trust in Him. Hallelujah. Put your trust in Him and Him alone. Come on. Bless the Holy Ghost. Three in one. Hallelujah. Put your trust in the Lord and, and thank Him. Thank Him, all ye land. Thank Him, all ye people. Oh, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. 
you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 I put my trust in the Lord. 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 Hey. Hey. Watching the C. Levi Martin Thanksgiving special. We're here at Unity Fellowship Baptist Church. I am so grateful to have you with me, and I'm so grateful that I can see people saying things like, I'm grateful for life. Amen. Amen. That's my sis Bindu of, of Unity Fellowship. Amen. 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 I'm grateful for life. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for someone who can say, I'm grateful for life. Here is someone that says, thank God. Amen. 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 Maria Seaton, God bless you. God bless you. Thank God and happy Thanksgiving. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I am grateful. I am grateful. You know, you know, I'm looking for folks who are here. Amen. 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 To, to, to tell God thanks. To tell God thanks, to, to show gratitude, to have an attitude of gratitude. Remember, your attitude determines your altitude. You know, folks who got bad attitude, they're down in the ground. And they want to get you in the gutter with them. But no, 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 no. Stay high. Stay high. When they go low, you go high. When they go debased, you keep your strength in the Lord. Ignore the devil. Ignore the enemy. And he will flee. And let him be by himself. But let us let us give God the glory. Happy Thanksgiving to all. Here's a, here's a word from my friend, William Chinowit. Happy Thanksgiving to all. Happy Thanksgiving to all. That's why we're here. We're here to give God thanks. We're here to show appreciation. We're here to lift each other up. We're here to hold up the bloodstained banner of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is because of this. I want to share one of my favorite psalms with you. It's probably one of yours too. Uh, my mother would have me memorize scripture as a child. And, and th th this is one of them. Uh, it, it, it's, it's the psalm that we need to use for thanksgiving today. Amen. It says Psalm 91. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Hear it in your hear it in in, 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 in in your ears as I read it even now. Now, the place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. The, oh, come on, somebody. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Oh, thank you for your word, God, his truth. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night. Is anybody afraid tonight? Is anybody afraid, is anybody afraid of sickness, or afraid of disease, afraid of the enemy, afraid of anything? I come to tell you that God has not given us the spirit of fear or of doubt, but of a sound mind. Verse 5 says, Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flyeth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. Don't be afraid of evil. 
Don't be afraid of evil. Say us evil. Do us. The Bible says, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as green herb. Thank the Lord today. Give him glory. Give him thanks. Give him praise. Give him the glory. Because in the midst of giving God glory, the enemy will want to come and take your eyes of the prize. Take your eyes of giving God praise. But the Bible itself declared that the Lord inhabits the praise of his saints. Thank God today. Thank him not just today, but thank him every day. Wake up in the morning and say, this is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I will thank him that I have another day of living. Another day of moving. Another day of moving. Another day of being. The Bible says we, we have our being because of Christ who lives in us. Don't be afraid of the pestilence that walk in darkness, nor the destruction that wasted at noonday. He says, a thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. A thousand shall fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come nigh thee. Only with thine eye shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. And then it says, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation, because you've made God the place where you live, where you move and have your being. He said, because you do this, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. No plague will come near where you live. I rebuke coronavirus from, from your home. I rebuke it from your family. I rebuke it from your life. Hallelujah. And I give God the thanks and I give God the glory because through him we have the victory. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Why? Why? It says, for he shall give his angels charge over thee. He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. God will send his angels. I spoke with a lady today, Beverly. Her mother is aged. And I believe that she's being called home. And Beverly shared with me, she says, I can feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. I can feel the angels of the Lord around my mother preparing her. That's what the word of God says. He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. So they shall bear thee up in their hands lest you dash your foot against the stone. On this Thanksgiving day, thank God. Thank God. Thank God for what he is doing in your life. Thank God for what he's done in your life. Thank God for what he will continue to do in your life. It doesn't matter what the enemy says. It's what God says that matters. And he says, above all things, I wish that you be in peace. In all things, I pray that you prosper, be in good health, even as your soul prosper. Even as your soul prosper. So I'm saying to you today, my brothers and sisters, as we thank God, don't be distracted by the naysayers. Give God the glory. Give God the praise because he said he will send his angels charge to keep thee lest you dash your foot against the stone. He says you will tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shall you trample on the feet. You will make your enemy your footstool. Thank God for that. Thank God for that. It says because he had set his love upon me. David is writing and he's writing as if this is God speaking now. Hear the word, hear it, what God is saying in verse 14. God is saying, because he, because she has set his love, her love upon me, therefore will I deliver him, therefore will I deliver her. I will set him on high because he had known my name. God is going to lift you up because you've called upon his name, because you've done what he's asked you to do in all things. Give thanks. Pray without season. Be grateful and bless his name. The Lord says, you will call upon him and he will answer you. He will be with you in trouble. He will deliver and honor you with long life. Will he satisfy you and show you his salvation? I want to thank God for you today. I want to thank God for all of you. 
be not af afraid. Be not afraid. Be not afraid for the terror by night, nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. Be not afraid, but trust God in all things. Give thanks, for it is the will of God through Christ Jesus. You know, many years ago, the Indians and some of the folks who had come to America were in battle with each other. And they got hungry at some point. And they put down their guns. Share a meal. As you share meals with your family and loved ones and friends today, tell them you love them. Tell them you care. I pray that a loved one that you've not spoken to for a while, whatever the reason, they're waiting for you. You pick up the phone and call. You be the one to forgive. And tell them I thank God that you're in my life. I thank God you're my brother. I thank God you're my sister. Make peace. The peace of God that passeth all understanding. How can we say we love God whom we're not seen and we hate our brothers who we see every day? On this Thanksgiving as we thank God, look at somebody who has made a difference in your life. A shoulder on which you stood. McGee says he came to America with two dollars. Many folks came to his rescue. Somebody drove him home. He didn't have money for taxi, not even bus. How did you come to these great United States? When you look back over your life, do you reflect on the people whose hands affected your progress? Scholarships, the first job, the woman you married to, the man you married to today, the children that God has blessed you with. The extended family that God has given to you. God has never left you in all these years. His promises are sure. He says in Matthew 28, 19, I will be with you always. Remember when you were sick. Didn't even have medicine, but you got well. Remember when everybody else gave up on you and said you will be nothing? God raised you up from nothingness to nobility. Remember when you stutter and could not speak with a full sentence? Now you're a speaker, an orator. Remember when everybody gave up on you? And said you would be a grown-up. You would be a nobody. David said he brought me up also out of the muck and the mire and the horrible pit. And plant my feet on the solid rock. Remember when you were on welfare? Remember when you were on food stamp? Remember when you didn't even have clothes? Now your cupboard, your closets run over, your cupboard overflow. God is a good God. He deserves our adoration, our adulation, our praise. He deserves it. Because when I look back over my life, there was nobody but God who brought me through. Before I graduated from high school, I'd lost both my father and mother. I was an orphan studying at Liberian Baptist Theological Seminary when I got the opportunity to come to the United States to study and go to seminary. First go through four years of college and then seminary. Only God 
Only God, my sister Rhodesia, send that invitation. I thank God for the Lebanese chef at Diana restaurant that I could rent the suite on my Benson Street home. Benson Street, Snapper Hill, the third story suite for $1,500, the exact what I needed for a round trip ticket, which was required to travel. I thank God for Peter Amos George, who signed a letter of affidavit of support. Didn't have to. All of us have people we can look back on our lives and be grateful for and thank them. What are you thankful for? Or you think you made it all by yourself, all on your own? No, you didn't. No, you didn't. All of us can look back and say, were it not for the grace of God, had God not been in my life, had God not been there for me, had God not made a way out of nowhere, had God not opened a highway in the midst of a Red Sea, never would have made it, never could have made it without you. I would have lost it all. But now I see you were there for me. I never, never would have made it. Oh, I never, never could have made it without you, Lord. I would have lost it all. But now I see, now I see, now I see. You were there for me. I never, never should have made it. I look where God has brought me from. Look at where he's brought you from. And give thanks. I thank God for my three sons who are men now. I thank God for my daughter who... <laughs> doctor said before she was born that it, she was not going to be right. And we just prayed and believed God. And she could not be more right than she is. I thank God. Because we serve a God who is continuous, continuously creating miracles and working miracles. He said, all things work together for good for them that love the Lord, for them that are called according to his purpose. All of us, all of us are children of God. And if we turn to him, the word says he will in no wise cast us out. Oh, I'm thankful for my friend Tilma. My friend Charles Edward, Charles Edward. Goodrich. Thank God for the so many people I know, friends I know, acquaintances I have. Thank God for the opportunity to preach his word. He called me at nine years old. I knew I would do this. What is God calling you to do? How are you showing your gratitude for his tremendous grace and mercy showered upon you? I'm going to be on until 5.30. I had said 4 till 5. But I'm grateful right now because when I look back over my life, I should have been dead in 2009. A terrible car accident. Terrible car accident. Some of you may have seen the picture then. The Lexus was totaled. Totaled. I ran head in the back of a cargo carrying 44 to truck. I ran head into it. <laughs> I 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. God brought me out of it. You know why? When I gripped the steering wheel with all my might, placed my foot on the brakes as hard as I could, the car would not slow down. All I could say was, Jesus! hundred and ninety one Psalm verse 15 he shall call upon me I will answer him I will be with him in trouble I will deliver him and honor him that is why I'm alive today because I call on the name of Jesus the Bible said there is no other name under heaven giving among men whereby we must be saved but the name of Jesus. For there is power in his name. There is power in his name. On this Thanksgiving, I'm grateful for you. All of you. All of you who are here. All of you. Because God has a plan for all of us. All of us. I'm going to play one song. And then I will close in a word of prayer. I pray that this Thanksgiving you're with family. With friends. With loved ones. I pray that you're following the health protocols. I pray that you're doing that. I pray that you're enjoying the fellowship of family, loved ones. I pray that you have a fellowship with God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, three in one. I pray that on this Thanksgiving Day that you will take a time to say, God, I, I thank you. I thank you, Father, for what you've done, for what you're doing, and for what you will do. Thank him. And when God sees that you're grateful, he will do greater, exceeding things in your life. He's looking for gratitude. He's looking for appreciation. If you show him thanks, yes, Give you more. Hey, be happy in the Lord. That's the name. That's the name. Jesus.
Happy Thanksgiving. What are you having for Thanksgiving? You got some jollof rice? Ha ha! You got some mac and cheese for the children? Yeah, hallelujah! Don't burn the don't burn the turkey now. Go check it. Go check the turkey. <laughs> you got some stove top stuffing, some cranberry sauce, or you got some mommy put a pepper. <laughs> Come on. Good to see you, Winslow. Lawrence, good to see you, Rose. Hindu. Wemma. God is with me, Kali. I like that name. God is with me. Hey. Hey, folks, uh, it's just about time to leave. I just want to thank all of you for sharing with me and being here. Sharing in the prayer, sharing in the joy. This, y'all know this song. We want to, it's a one way ticket to Monrovia. When you talk about Monrovia, I want to, I want to, all you Maria people, all you people from Liberia, what do you got for Thanksgiving? Come out of somebody text me, put it in on my coming. Let me see what you got for, for Thanksgiving today. Thank my Lord. You hear how she starts? I thank my Lord. This is a Thanksgiving song. Hey, thank my Lord. I thank my Lord. Hey. God bless you, Maria. Sit in. One way. Praise the Lord. Praise God Almighty. I pray that you had a festive Thanksgiving. Plenty to eat. Family to love. Laughter and cheer. This is life. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. It is the gift of God. But don't forget to give God thanks. Don't forget to give God the glory. Because every good thing comes from above. The turkey, the yam, the potato salad. All God made it. You may have mixed it up and cooked it, but, but God gave you all of that. And there are people hungry. But he give you to a fullness. My Lord. Thank you, Lord. I will remind you to praise him. Hallelujah. Come on. One way. One way. One way. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you.
I want to I want to thank you guys. I want to thank all of you today for spending this time with me. I want to thank uh, Servant of God Alexander Red. I want to thank Charles Adam McGee for joining me. I want to thank uh, Marcus Jones. I want to thank E. Marcus Jones. He said he didn't like when he called him that, but I, I love that young man. Uh, I call him young man because I'm old. I'm older than most guys right now. Uh, I just look young. <laughs> That's a joke. Uh, amen. I just look young. I thank God for you. <clears throat> May uh, God bless you, uh, Maria Seaton. You a strong woman. You you go to you you go to battle forever. But you know what? God bless you. God bless you. God bless. God bless even the enemies of the word. Amen. Amen. And it doesn't matter what people say about you or what God says about you. I want you guys to be thankful. Leave here today. Uh, I want to find the song while I pray. Amen, amen. I want to, I just want to pray, you know, that God will take care of you. That God will bless you. That God will heal you. That God will deliver you. There are people right now who are struggling with troubles, struggling in the hospital, struggling with diseases, struggling with the need for finances, struggling with wayward children or an abusive husband, struggling with how am I going to pay the car note, how am I going to pay the rent. The people who say, What is there to be thankful for? But I want you to know God understands your situation. He has not left you. He will not leave you. He promised he will be with you. So trust in him. Trust in him. He will see you through. He will see you through. He will make a way out of no way. And he will deliver you. of what he's done for me, for what he's done for Charles McGee, for what he's done for thousands of others. And it's the same God yesterday, today, forever, and what he's done for others, amen, he will do for you. So I'm going to pray now. I want to say a word of prayer for you and for me, for we all need prayer. I don't know what your prayer needs are, but one of the things I do in my Sunday service, I give people the opportunity to text in what they want God to do for them. And the Bible says, make your request known unto the Lord. If you make your request known, God will grant you the desires of your heart. Will you make your request known? God's grace and mercy is sufficient to supply all your needs. with you. 
I want to pray for you. I want to pray for your family. I want to pray for your hopes, your aspirations, your goals. I'm living this moment because of you. I, 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 I want to thank you and praise you too. Your grace. Father God, I come in the mighty name of Jesus, who's Lord. The name above every name. You said if we come to you, you will in no wise cast us out. Father, somebody saying, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need. A prayer. Huh? Somebody standing in the need of deliverance, oh God. We know that your grace is sufficient to supply all their needs. Lord, somebody standing right now in the need of healing. Lord, we know that you are the balm of Gilead that can make the wounded whole. Touch, Father, someone sick with fever. Touch, God. Heal diabetes in the name of Jesus. Cancer in the name of Jesus. Hey! High blood pressure in the name of Jesus. God, you can do anything but fail. Oh. Lord, somebody right now is depressed. Oh. Cannot see the light at the end of the tunnel. But God, you said, I am the light of the world. Shine in that dark place where they are. Let your light so shine, God, that they might see who you are. Glorify you, give you the thanks, and God, that you too will do as you did with David. That you will lift them up from that place of depression, that place of degradation. Make them whole. Make them new. Restore. Renew. Regenerate, reverberate, re inspire, oh God. Father, in the name of Jesus, the families that here listen, I pray, oh God, that you will make a way for them. Make a way for them, oh God, for you're the way maker out of nowhere. Hey! Make their rough places smooth and their crooked places straight. That the glory of the Lord will be revealed in their lives and in their homes and, and in everything that they do. God, be present. God, I pray for Beverly. Bring her through. Bring her through. Bring her through. Bring your people through. Bring your people through. Bring your people through. Oh God, I pray that they will, like David, be able to say, My cup, run it over. Surely goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. I thank you for this Thanksgiving day. 
I thank you, dear God, for your people. Teach us to be grateful, to be kind, to be loving, to be more like you. Thank you for every family. May the Lord tonight give you an increase in faith. For with that faith, you will do what seems impossible. Because with God, all things are possible. Let him be the center of your life, of your joy, of your happiness. Let your gratitude flow towards God like a peaceful river. Let it flow to him as dew on the flower at the dawn of a new day. Let God be praised in your life. Let him be lifted up. For the word of God is true. If I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Simple things in life. Ha! You're the music in the meadows and the stream. The voices of the children, my family and my home. Thank you, Jesus. You're the source and finish. Of my highest dream. Oh, 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 Jesus, you're the center of my joy. All that's good and perfect comes from you. You're the heart. My contentment, oh, for all I do, Jesus, you are the center of my joy, Jesus, you are the center of my joy. Jesus, you are the center of my joy. Jesus, you are the center of my joy. You are everything, everything, everything. Everything You my joy In my sorrow You my hope For oh, tomorrow When I'm lonely Feeling sad You are the lifter Of my head You my music You my song you my joy all day long. Oh, Jesus, you're the center of my joy. 
want to thank God for all of you. I want to praise God for you. I wish you a happy Thanksgiving Day. My daughter just gave me a signal that Thanksgiving turkey is ready. Father, we thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for everyone who's taking time to watch. Join me this Friday for Liberia's history past and present, this Sunday morning at 11 a.m. for our worship service, and on Wednesday at 7 p.m. right here for our Bible study. I love you all again. Happy Thanksgiving. This is Reverend Charles Levi Martin signing off. I wish you a very happy Thanksgiving. Enjoy your family. Don't forget to give God thanks. Yeah, man, I'm going to go eat. I eat all day. I eat all day. God bless you all. I'm going to eat. Yellow. Some of y'all finna eating. I'm going to go eat now. Bye. <laughs> Love you all. Love you all. Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen.